When you're interviewing for medicine or dentistry, if the interviewer has half a clue about what they're doing, there is no doubt that they're going to ask you questions about yourself. Now, these are really important ones to, again, separate yourself from the crowd, to deliver just a, there's so many answers that are just okay, whereas this is the one where we're gonna just really smash it and show why you are the right person out of all the people that they're interviewing, where they should give you an offer, because, this is where you can take control of this and show them that you are really the person that they should choose. So in this video, we're gonna talk about all the questions that come up related to you and how to separate yourself from the crowd to deliver just that banging answer that's gonna get you an offer at medical school. So this is the area where they're going to ask you about your strengths, your weaknesses, your life experiences, and whether you spent any time reflecting on these. They want to assess your time management, your ability to cope with stress, your toughness, and your just ability to be resilient through difficult times, because these are all things that are really important that they need to check ahead of giving you a chance to become a doctor. And the word that I touched on there that is by far the most important of all of those is that of reflection. This is where you deliberate over your experiences, analyze what happened, what went well, what went wrong, what could go better next time and how you're going to improve. It's inevitable that at some point in your career as a doctor, something is going to go wrong. Of the hundreds of doctors I've met throughout my career, the amount of people that have failed or or had encountered some sort of failure or speed bump or setback is zero. Everybody will get some sort of setback or failure. The importance of medicine today is how you respond to that. It's not that you don't fail, it's how you learn from your mistakes and continually grow. Continual growth and lifelong learning are part and parcel of a career in medicine and your ability to understand that and then show how you demonstrate that is going to be key to you getting off at a place at medical school. One of the really common things that they're going to ask you about is your strengths. Now be prepared for this, have some examples ready, know some strengths that you're going to name because this is one of the questions that really catches people off guard. Now here are some tips to make sure that you do well in these questions and don't fall into the common traps. The first thing is it's important to say a genuine quality of yours. It's that self-awareness that's going to show some maturity that you understand what you're good at. Second thing is don't be too humble. You are there to showcase why you should be a good doctor. So it's really important that you actually say something that is, if, if you are good at something, say it and don't be, don't be shy to say it. It's a big difference between being confident and being arrogant. So make sure you're on that confident side of life. When you're choosing things, pick two or three things that make you truly exceptional. You want to, like I say, stand out from the crowd. So think of things that set you apart from everybody else. Having these two ready will stop you repeating yourself, which is something that we want to avoid. But always relate them back to how they are going to make you a good doctor or help you in your career in med school and later on as a doctor. Just so that you're, under, you're clearly showing the link between the two. A good way to do it, like I said, is to back it up with examples. So I always kind of um, go advocate the claim and corroborate. So make a claim and then just talk about an example that you have done or a, an action or a hobby or whatever it is that backs up that claim that you've made. Incidentally, the claiming and corroborating is the cure to arrogance. If you are saying something confidently and really, like I say, not being too humble, when you back it up with, well, yes, I am a very good organizer because I run a society and I have to allocate tasks, that is a clear example and a clear demonstration of that trait. And the pro tip for this is that when you do your corroboration, when you have your example, use something that shows another thing on top that you want to show off to them. For example, if you use your work experience or your volunteering or some of your prizes or achievements that you've made to corroborate that claim, then that's a subtle way of dropping in that you've done the extra things that they want to see that they might want to ask you about. And then when they maybe do come on to ask you about the, that question directly, you can say, well, I've already mentioned that, but I've got another experience here that I wanna talk about to show them that you have done more than just one thing and you actually have a really wide range of reasons why you should be a doctor. Second pro tip is that when they ask you these questions, they will probably, rather than say, what is your biggest strength? They might say something along the lines of, name a few traits that you believe would make you a good doctor. Now, the same way as I talked about when you talk about your work experience here in this video, start by listing the things that you're going to talk about. So you might say something like, I'm a good team player, I communicate well, and I'm very dedicated. And then individually you go into each of those and you give 
the example for, that corroborates each of those claims. So these questions will come in a variety of formats. They might ask this question, or they might ask this question, like this, or finally like this. Now, I talk about how to tackle each of those individually in this video here, where you can get the resource for how to answer every type of question that can come up at interview. The next thing they might ask you are negative questions. Now, this is where you might be asked about your weaknesses, but you should not see it as something to shirk away from. It is a demonstration of self-awareness and the ability to grow and identify areas of weakness that you need to develop. So. Do not fall into the common pitfalls of kind of cliches or saying things that are not really weaknesses. The classic is, oh, I work too hard. But we're gonna talk about what things to do and not do when you get asked questions like this and the type of questions that are gonna come up. So like I say, firstly, avoid those cliches like I care too much or things like that. Same as the strengths, name something that is genuinely a negative trait. Then a great way of demonstrating your self-awareness is to show how you came to realize that that is a negative trait that you possess. One tip obviously here is to not say something terribly bad that is unredeemable that makes you ineligible to practice medicine or might make the interview very, very awkward. But then what you want to do is transition quickly into what action steps you are taking towards addressing this weakness and how you're going to develop it and improve it to help you become a good doctor. It's a great opportunity, again, to show that ability to reflect and have that self-awareness to to close that loop of continuous learning and development. And if you really need some ideas for things that are okay to say that are kind of typical weaknesses, things like procrastination, fear of public speaking, going to bed too late, those are things that everybody does and are kind of forgivable, but things that maybe we might want to work on to improve ourselves. So remember, this is an opportunity. They are not looking for a completely perfect person with no negative traits. So don't feel like you have to hide anything. Here, this is your opportunity to show self-awareness, insight, the ability to reflect, and how you go about taking on challenges to improve yourself to become better. So the variations of this question are asked usually in about four ways. So you have this one, then you have this one, you have this version, and then finally they can ask a question like this. Now again, if you click the information button here, I'll show you a resource where you can know exactly how to answer each of those questions perfectly to put yourself in that upper echelon of people that are going to almost guarantee themselves an offer by smashing these questions. The next questions they're gonna ask you are around stress identification and management. Medicine, in whether you're going through the degree or actually working as a doctor, is known to be a stressful career. And there are a number of pressures that you're under. Here is a list, just to name a few, of the kind of pressures that you might be under when you are practicing as a medical student or as a doctor. So when you get any questions about stressful situations, stress management, or how you identify and cope with stress, I want you to take the following three-step approach. The first one is that you need to demonstrate how you identify when you are stressed or under pressure. So what it is that, that you know about yourself that is a good indicator. Then the second thing is how you cope with it. So what do you do to deal with that stressful situation? And then wrap it off with the third step, which is to reflect back on why stress management is important and being able to recognize that in yourself. Usually it's around avoiding burnout, which obviously can lead to a lot of uh, long-term problems, but also how you manage patients. If you are too stressed and you know there's that thing of the, the Yerkes-Dodson equation where uh, a little bit of anxiety is good enough to keep you focused, but too much can mean that you are almost paralyzed by stress and not able to function optimally. And that will translate to how you manage your patients. So you need to be in that right zone, the you stress zone as they call it, so that you're performing optimally. One thing that I would recommend when they ask you these kind of questions is use that framework that I talked about in this video, which is the scare tactic. Now this is a really good way because the stressful thing is the challenge in that acronym and this will really help you kind of talk about or go through the whole model of identifying stress, what actions you take to deal with the stress and reflecting back. So that scare tactic is a really good one that I'd recommend. It's part of this video series of the interview. So uh, check that out just to kind of give you a really good catch all framework for most answers and how you would formulate them. It's not a panacea of giving you one thing to do everything, but most situations will be really well dealt with by that. Now, if you're not sure how to combat stress, 
here is a list of maybe some possible actions that work for some people when taking action to combat stress. So think of maybe those as tools in your arsenal to help you in your stressful situations. The final part to talk about in stress relief is not just what you do in the short and immediate term to help with stressful situations, but what you do in the long term as a stress relief. So this is the kind of thing where you talk about your hobbies or just things that you do, maybe habits, maybe you like to take a long bath, or maybe you like to watch films, read, whatever it is that is a really good release for you and an outlet to stop stress building up over the long term. The final thing they will ask you about is resilience and your ability to overcome failures. Now, the GMC defines resilience as the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. So again, like I mentioned, that throughout your medical career, at some point you will experience failure of some sort, whether it's exams, interviews, maybe getting a diagnosis wrong. These are things that happen to a lot of med, well, pretty much all medics. and. But then a lot of mistakes that you make will be very small and actually inconsequential. But again, it's all about your insight, self-awareness and ability to reflect and learn from those so that over time you make sure that you don't make the same mistakes again. And that is how you grow and improve as a person. So again, when it comes to answering questions about a past failure and they ask you to talk about it, again, using that SCARE framework is a really good way to go about it. And in that framework, the action is going to be the thing or the mistake that you made or just identifying the action that you took that contributed to the failure or whatever the situation is. Again, the reflection and the ability to talk about that and what you are going to change and, and the lessons that you learned are the bit that they want to see and that's the bit that's really going to score you points. But really the most important thing that you want to do here is demonstrate that resilience. Resilience is basically just the ability to keep going in the face of setbacks. and. Really, they always say that a failure is not real unless you give up. So you only actualize a failure if you completely give up. There's a quote from a book that I read recently by a really famous jujitsu master. And he says, there is no shame in losing, but there is shame in quitting. And that's exactly what it is. Resilience is the ability to take the loss, keep going. And really, it's only when you stop that you kind of have quit and then maybe you have kind of lost that resilience or failed in that respect. So it's really important just to help demonstrate that you are resilient and you'd have that ability to keep going and learn from your mistakes to keep growing. So if you want to cover all the key subjects that you need to do well at interview, I recommend that you check out this playlist here. Or if you want to check out my course where basically any student that I've had that has gone through this course and my one-on-one -on -one program, having had an interview, they've all converted those interviews into offers. Check out this video here where I give you that resource, just everything that you need all in one place. Thank you for watching and I will see you over in one of those videos.